I'm s h o r t a y a m a n a k a from Yahoo Japan Research. In this study, we propose the bivalent effect of width method for pointing tasks with rectangular targets. Fitzroy has been used to predict the movement time in pointing tasks on the basis of the index of difficulty. Another important usage of Fitzroy is to compute the throughput. Even when the error rate is very high or low, we can use the effective width so that the error rate is adjusted to 4%. Then, we obtain the effective index of difficulty and throughput as a pointing performance. The main advantage of throughput is normalizing subjective biases. For example, when participants are biased towards speed or accuracy, the model fitness using the nominal ID is low, but the fitness using the effective ID is improved. Also, Even when the error rates are different depending on the bias, the throughputs are stable. So, the throughput metric is less affected by subjective speed accuracy trade offs. This throughput metric enables fair comparisons when we want to evaluate several devices, user groups, and interaction techniques. For example, when we compare the performance of mouse and touchpad, The throughputs are computed after the error rates are adjusted to 4%. However, as a limitation, we must use simple target shapes, including ribbon shaped targets and circular targets. To overcome this limitation, we propose the bivariate effective width method, which applies the effective sizes for both target width and height. We replace W and H in these models with WE and HE. We hypothesize that using effective sizes has the same advantages, that is, we obtain the better model fitness and stable throughputs. We conducted two experiments. In this experiment one, we distributed an executable file, and 18 university students performed the task. We tested three subjective bias conditions. Emphasizing accuracy, balancing speed and accuracy, and emphasizing speed. In total, we analyzed 120 task conditions. The results show that the three bias conditions significantly affected the movement time, error rate, and end point distribution. In particular, the error rate was 1.7% under the accurate condition, while that was 11% under the first condition. So, the participants clearly changed their behavior depending on the bias. Our question is whether the bivariate effective width method can normalize these performance differences. The first metric of performance normalization is the improvement in model fitness. When three bias conditions are mixed, the best fit was achieved by a c o t and size model. Using the nominal target sizes yielded The adjusted R squared of 0.67, but using the effective sizes yielded 0.90, so the model fitness was significantly improved. The regression figures show that more plot points are located closely to the regression line when we use the effective sizes. The second metric is throughput normalization. For example, when we use the nominal sizes for a c o t and size model, the throughputs increased by more than 1 bits per second. In comparison, when we use the effective sizes, the throughput change was less than 0.4 bits per second. So, we conclude that using effective sizes appropriately normalized the user performance. The second experiment was conducted via crowd sourcing. Any input device was acceptable, but we analyzed only mouse user data. In total, 207 mouse users completed the task. The results show the consistent tendencies with experiment 1. The three bias conditions significantly affected the movement time, error rate, and end point distribution. The best fit was achieved by a c o t and size model when the three bias conditions were mixed. Using the nominal target sizes yielded the adjusted R squared of 0.71, but using the effective sizes yielded 
The regression figures also supported that the model fitness was improved by using the effective sizes. For the throughput normalization results, using the effective target sizes yielded more stable throughputs. Therefore, the throughput difference values were smaller when we used effective IDs. So we again confirmed that using effective IDs produced normalized user performance. The results of the two experiments showed that the bivariate effect width method gave normalized user performance on the basis of the good model fitness and stable throughputs. As a check, if we use the effect width and nominal height, the model fitness decreased significantly. Therefore, using both effect width and effective height is necessary. By using the bivariate effect width method, we can now conduct user experiments with realistic rectangular targets to compare several input devices, user groups, and interaction techniques. In summary, we showed that using the effective target sizes can normalize the speed accuracy biases. As a limitation of this study, we tested only horizontal movements. But as a more general case, a mouse cursor reaches a target in various approaching angles. So our next step is to derive models for such conditions. That's all. Thank you for watching.